Hello friends. This is Fanfic Universe. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto become the almighty king of the west? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. A pair of striking cerulean eyes opened in response to the sunlight filtering into the large room. Said man groaned as he slowly returned to the waking world. He felt a warm breath tickle his chest and smiled at the now common sight of the mop of blonde hair that belonged to his wife. The feel of her body pressed against his putting him at ease. He turned to look at the calendar and realized that it was a day of both joy and sadness for him. He stroked his wife's hair gently as he recalled what had happened to his life in the past ten years and how much had changed for him, from being an orphan to being one of the most powerful and influential man in the world. Ten years ago he had been banished from the place that he had once called home for doing his job all because the village valued bloodlines over anything else. He remembered that day vividly in his memory, he had brought back the Uchiha after subduing him in their fight at the Valley of the End. Despite his terrible injuries, he managed to trudge back with the Uchiha in tow and when he got back, he received the hatred of the village as well as his crush for hurting the precious Uchiha. Even his teacher expressed his disdain towards him. All those he thought were his friends looked at him with disgust and eventually he was banished by the council. The only people that were willing to stand with him were Tsunade, Jiraiya and the Ichirakus. But they couldn't do anything except help him prepare for his departure as best as they could. The third had lost most of his power to the council and the Hokage was now mostly a figurehead. He had decided to travel towards the uncharted lands in the west, over the wall where no shinobi had ever ventured before. It was a difficult journey and by the time he reached the war-torn lands in the west, he was completely exhausted and nearly out of supplies. It was when he had stopped to rest in a cave that he met the person that would forever change his life for the better. His mentor and surrogate grandfather, Yamamoto. The man was old and had clearly seen many battles, evidenced by his white beard and the many scars that littered his body. He saw the potential Naruto possessed and took the beaten boy under his wing. Naruto was thought how to use a katana by the old man as well as how to properly use his chakra. He was then thought how to use a different power called magic that had a different set of downsides to chakra but had two very big plus sides in that it had no real limitation since it was imagination given form and the user faced no risk of dying if they ran out of energy. The old man thought Naruto the basics of magic and Naruto took to it like a sponge, learning everything the old man thought him in record time. Eventually though his happy times with the old man ended as Yamamoto passed due to a grievous injury inflicted by his opponent in an old battle. He passed on his magical sword to Naruto and the old man's parting words would always be remembered by Naruto. Never ever give up and you will achieve what you believe, don't stop moving forward, there is nothing to fear but fear itself. I know you will become a great man one day Naruto. Remember that even the most insignificant person can have something to contribute if they choose to and never let hatred fester for it is a plague that will only bring ruination. Yamamoto said as he stared at the ceiling before the life left his eyes. Naruto buried the man below his favorite at the place where they trained and decided to continue his journey while training himself in the use of the sword left to him. It was after seeing the way the constant strife in the land was affecting the common people that Naruto decided to unite the lands, hiding himself away to train till he developed enough power to topple the warlords that were constantly at each other's throats and uniting the lands under one banner. He was crowned king of the western kingdom and helped it to prosper into what it is now. It was along the way that he met the woman who would later become his wife and queen of the kingdom. Celestia Ralgris was a beautiful blonde haired woman with a body that made men drool. But what drew Naruto to her was his strong spirit that mirrored his own. They met when he went to gather allies towards the end of his campaign to unify the land. She came from a noble house but refused to be treated as a delicate flower and constantly wanted to prove that she was worthy of her name. She fought together with Naruto leading the forces of her house into battle, working her way up into becoming Naruto's confidant and eventually his lover. Naruto proposed to her the same day he was crowned king and the people cheered as she accepted the proposal with tears of joy. Naruto was cut off from his musing when he heard his wife mutter, indicating that she was finally starting to wake up. He couldn't help but chuckle as it was widely known that the queen wasn't much of a morning person and given their activities last night, 
she would probably rather sleep the day away but alas they had matters to attend to as the king and queen of the kingdom. Naruto continued stroking his wife's hair as she stirred. Celestia opened her eyes to the morning, looking around the room sleepily before giving a warm smile to her husband, snuggling deeper into his chest. How are you feeling love? Naruto asked. Tired. I think we were a little bit too passionate last night. Celestia said with a fond smile recalling their bout of lovemaking. They had nearly every night, the activity helping them to relax. It never got boring whenever they made love despite having been going at it for two years now. You certainly weren't complaining. But we do need to get up now dear. We have a council meeting to attend soon after all. Naruto said, causing his wife to pout. Naruto simply chuckled and in one swift movement, carried her in his arms to the bathroom so that they could get ready. It was an hour later after some fun in the bathroom, a shower and their breakfast before the royal couple was ready in their normal outfits for the council meeting. Naruto was dressed in a black and white bodysuit with white and silver armor over it that had similarities to those worn by the samurai with an ornate silver crown. Ryujin Jaka was strapped securely to his waist. He had grown into a fine young man with a compact frame that looked like it was chiseled from stone. His hair seemed as radiant as the sun and held an odd smooth quality to it despite how spiky and untamed it looked. Celestia was dressed in a matching white and black bodysuit that hugged her figure and over that were pieces of yellow and gold armor as well as a short battle skirt. She had a gold crown that had a similar design to Naruto and she had her rapier, Lindworm strapped to her side. The armor was functional yet also served to display her radiant beauty which was akin to a goddess. Her long golden hair and her beautiful figure were all well protected and tastefully accentuated by her outfit. Once she came out fully dressed, Naruto offered her an arm and they strode out of the room together, greeting the servants that were entering to clean up the room. As they walked through the grand halls of the castle, they were greeted by the various servants. They walked down the main hall till they came upon a set of large ornate doors that had two armored men standing guard. The two men immediately straightened their posture when they saw the royal couple approaching, bowing in respect before opening the doors to reveal a large room. This room was the main throne room as well as the meeting place for the council. There was a large raised platform where there were two thrones, one in silver and one in gold for the king and queen. On the main level there were two long tables that had five seats each for the members of the council. The council was made up of ten members consisting of the lords of the ten districts. These lords were appointed by Naruto and also served as ministers who helped to create policies for the running of the kingdom. The king and queen still held absolute power as all decisions had to be approved by the king and queen. The king and queen also had certain liberties that Naruto put into place to ensure that the council could never gain too much power. Naruto and Celestia took their seats at their thrones, unclipping their weapons and placing them at their sides so that they would not be required to sit in an awkward posidon. Naruto took a deep breath before announcing that the council was now in session. In Konoha Tsunade felt like she needed a few bottles of sake or to send a few people to the hospital in order to deal with the massive headache that was being the Hokage. She was currently in a council meeting where the civilians and shinobi were currently bemoaning their situation while not coming up with a single solution to the problem. Part of her wanted to curse Serutobi for the problems that he had unknowingly created but she knew that the blame wasn't fully hers as Serutobi tried his best to salvage the pieces and patch the holes that the sudden death of Minato had caused. By the time things had settled down and Serutobi could focus on leading the village as a Hokage proper, the council had seized far too much power and the Hokage was little more than a figurehead. They were currently bemoaning the impending war with the IKO alliance. Iwa. Kumo and Otto had formed an alliance and there was news that they were gearing up for war against Konoha. In the past such a thing would not be so worrying considering Konoha was known to be the strongest hidden village but much has changed in the past 10 years since arguably the greatest mistake the village has ever made. Konoha was once a prosperous village with great wealth and many allies that would come to their aid but that hasn't been the case for almost 10 years. The effects of the banishment of Naruto Uzumaki for doing his job was felt quickly and painfully. When their allies got wind of their actions, many were quick to condemn the leaf and all the alliances that Naruto had helped to make were broken. Wave, Spring and many other minor countries broke off their trading contracts with the leaf, choosing to impose increased taxation on goods sold to the leaf, greatly affecting finances. Suna had decided that they were no longer friendly terms ever since Gara had become the case cage, 
stating that a village that could go so far as to banish a loyal shinobi could not be trusted not to be a turncoat in the event of war. Konoha had been steadily weakening and Orochimaru had decided that he would be finally be able to get rid of the leaf, hence the impending war. Iwa and Kumo had merely decided to make the most of the opportunity, the enemy of my enemy, as the saying went. Sasuke Uchiha had become even worse ever since he had recovered from the ordeal. His treatment by the village made him think of himself as the most superior being in existence and he always did as he pleased, rarely if ever listening to any orders with the exception of Danzo and occasionally Kakashi. The council had fast-tracked his promotion and he was now a junin. They had even handed over every single jutsu to the Uchiha and were even suggesting that he be groomed to be the next Hokage. The very thought made Tsunade blanch as she realized that Konoha was going further and further away from any possibility of redemption. Every single time the council would give out half ed suggestions, never being able to fully grasp how weak the leaf village had become. They constantly claimed that they had been cursed by the demon and that they had to find it and kill it to rid the course. Tsunade could only roll her eyes at the stupidity of this. Every time she was reminded of Naruto she sent a silent prayer to every deity out there that the blonde was still alive and doing well wherever he was. We must do something about the coming battle. We must ensure that Konoha remains the strongest hidden village, one civilian counselor shouted out. Have we been able to find the demon? We must quickly locate it and kill it so that we can kill it, another counselor shouted. We have nothing to fear with the power of the Sharingan. The other villages and our former allies are foolish not to acknowledge this fact. The daimyo of snow should have been more than happy to be married to the Uchiha and have the honor of bearing his children, a fat counselor droned. All of you shut up, Tsunade shouted, finally having enough of the shouting. They quietened down when the table in front of her was turned to splinters in her annoyance. Now we can try and get somewhere with this council meeting. Now the main agenda is how we will deal with the impending war with the IKO alliance. There is no way we can survive this without creating new alliances. All of our previous allies have once again refused to have anything to do with this but at the very least we can confirm that they are neutral parties in the coming conflict. Tsunade said with a grimace. While it wasn't particularly bad or new news, it still affected everyone greatly. We have to create new alliances then, turn to other avenues for what we need, adapt and weather it out just as the leaf always has. Danzo said. He still ran root in secret and he had tried many times to use underhanded means to gain back power for the leaf but his track recorded of success is still zero. The only possible option we have now would be to look outside of the elemental nations. Towards the lands in the west. Everyone in the elemental nations either wants us gone or doesn't want to help us thanks to what happened ten years ago. If we want to forge new alliances, we must find other places where we do not already have a reputation. Jiraiya suggested making his presence at the council meeting known as he stood next to Tsunade. But the lands in the west are in a constant state of war, a few of the clan heads shouted out. That was not what I heard lately. My sources tell me that it has been at peace for some time now under a single banner. Who exactly the ruler is I'm not sure since there are very unclear messages. Some say that it is a king of the purest white who wields the power of the sun and there are some who say that it is a queen as radiant as the sun wielding the power of the storms. Jiraiya said. This helps us greatly. I propose that we send a group of ninja to try and gain an alliance with the Kingdom of the West. If possible, secure a political marriage with the ruler of the land. I propose that we send Sasuke Uchiha to try and seduce the queen if she turns out to be the one in charge. Danzo said. Sasuke smirked at this. I hope she is as beautiful as your sources say Jiraiya. I will enjoy turning her into my plaything. I also hope she is as powerful as your sources claim. I don't want to have a weak wife, Sasuke said arrogantly. However, we should also make plans in case the ruler turns out to be the king instead. I propose sending my daughter, Sakura Haruno as well. Few men can resist her charm. Ken Haruno suggested. Tsunade could only rub her temples as she knew that this would be a bad idea and backfire severely on the leaf. Very well. This will be an S rank mission to be led by Jiraiya, Kakashi, Kiba, Asuma, Lee, Neji, and Shikamaru will be going on it as well. Your task is to secure an alliance with the Western Kingdom by any means necessary. You are to leave as soon as possible, Tsunade said, and then the council meeting was adjourned. Back in the West. I'm glad that's over. 
I was starting to feel like a statue with all the matters that we had to discuss. Naruto said as he stretched out his body while walking down the hallway with Celestia next to him. Celestia could only giggle at how no matter how many years passed her husband was still unable to stay still for long periods of time, having to twitch and move. So what do you think we should do now? We do have the rest of the day today. Celestia asked. Usually Naruto would be the one asking but he had been in a funk all day probably due to the significance of the day to him. It just didn't seem right to Celestia that her normally cheerful husband was being a downer. It was probably also due to the fact that they had discussed some matter pertaining to situation in the elemental nations earlier. Hmm, I'm not that hungry just yet so how about we have a light spar? We haven't had one in some time and it would help me to loosen up, Naruto said. Oh my, you know that our spars usually get us so hot and bothered that it leads to more, pleasurable activities, Celestia said seductively. Well then, I certainly wouldn't mind. Naruto said with a knowing smirk as the royal couple made their way towards their private training grounds. It was a large clearing built into the back of the castle that had only one entry and exit way in order to prevent unwanted intrusion and only the king, queen as well as the royal guard could use the pathway that lead to the training grounds as it had many magical protections put into place by Naruto. Naruto lifted out his hand and a small magic circle appeared in front of it, linking up with the array that was already present in the training field as an invisible barrier went up around the training field. This was to keep the damage contained as well as prevent them from scaring the people with their power if they decided to have any serious spars. The barrier was of Naruto's creation and it could hold up to 50% of his power and his wife at her full power so it was quite a work. Once the field was properly set up, they went to opposite ends, stretching themselves out before taking ready stances their weapons sheathed but ready to be drawn at a moment's notice. Celestia charged first, in an amazing burst of speed that only the most experienced veterans could see she was right in front of her husband, her rapier drawn and poised to stab him. Naruto tensed his muscles and raised his still sheathed katana up to deflect the strike away from his face, quickly creating distance and unsheathing his blade. Still as fast as ever love, if that was anyone else they might have lost an eye, Naruto joked. Of course you are still amongst the few people who are able to avoid my strikes to this day dearest husband. Now why don't we really get this spar underway? Celestia said with a smile. The royal couple disappeared from their spots as the only thing that could be seen to the casual observer were flashes of silver and gold together with the sounds of blades clashing. The only telltale signs of the ongoing spar being the various marks to the once pristine land of the training ground. They reappeared once more their bodies being the only thing visible as they exchanged blows. Their hands were a mere blur as Naruto countered Celestia's rapid thrusts with his speedy slashes. They took turns dictating the pace of the confrontation, the whole time a smile on their faces as the sound of blades clashing rang throughout the training field at changing tempos, almost sounding like a constant beat of metal. Eventually though they stopped and smiled at each other before Naruto quickly pinned his wife to the tree in the corner of the training ground their weapons forgotten in the center of the now destroyed clearing. Imhum. So forceful dear. Celestia said as she shared a passionate kiss with his husband, letting his tongue explore her mouth white guiding it along with her own. Well then you don't seem to have ever complained after all we've done this for more than a hundred times and each time you just like to have me pin you to this tree and take you roughly. Naruto growled into her ear, sending shivers down her spine. I think my body has forgotten all those times. Why don't you remind it and give it exactly what it needs my handsome stud of a king? Celestia purred into his ear. It didn't take long for any clothing that got in the way of their passionate union to be discarded and the two to become a tangle of limbs under the tree as sounds of pleasure filled the training ground. Celestia's eyes fluttered open as she purred in contentment. She felt a soreness in between her legs then reminded that her husband had literally screwed her into a coma thanks in part to her goading. She looked up to see the smiling face of her husband as he stroked her hair, realizing that her head was currently resting on his lap. Are you finally awake love? Naruto asked as he shifted from stroking his wife's hair to gently touching her cheek. Not really. I can't exactly feel my legs right now, Celestia said dryly. Naruto simply smiled and chuckled at her. Perhaps you shouldn't have goaded me into such a rough session love, Naruto said, scoping his wife up in his arms creating two clones, one to gather their belongings and another to jumpstart the magic spells that would restore the training field back to what it once was. Where are we going dear? 
Celestia asked sleepily. We should go take a bath before we headed for dinner. I'll help you get rid of the soreness. Then after that we can have a good night's rest. Naruto said as he carried his wife to the grand bathroom that had a large hot spring in the middle exclusively for use by the king and queen. Naruto helped to get Celestia out of her clothes, getting out of his own before carrying her in his arms and going into a hot spring. He summoned a clone to help get the bathing supplies while he adjusted his wife so that she was seated comfortably on his lap. He gave her a massage so as to soothe her muscles, using magic to help to ease her fatigue before lathering her body in soap and cleaning her pristine skin with the sponge. After that he washed his wife's hair with the utmost care, relishing in the sounds of content that she let out all the way. He was about to give her some peace so that he could do his own washing but she insisted that she should give him the same treatment. Once they were cleaned and had their meal, they turned in for the night, Celestia choosing a white nightgown that displayed her figure while Naruto chose simple boxers, the royal couple falling into a dreamless slumber in each other's arms. Two weeks later Jiraiya and the rest of the Konoha envoy had finally managed to make it to the capital of the Western Kingdom. It wasn't an easy journey and as they traveled through the land they could still see the impact of the long period of war. They were fearful at first, thinking that Jiraiya's information had been wrong and that the West was still at war until they came upon the first city of the kingdom. They were able to get directions to the capital as well as learn about an upcoming tournament that would be held in the next few days to celebrate the creation of the Western Kingdom. They didn't really bother on digging for much more information though since they had a very tight schedule as each day the envoy was away from the leaf meant one more day without their aid in the leaf's defenses. They were awed by the grandeur of the capital, the hustle and bustle of the civilians as they prepared for the coming festival. They decided to head straight for the castle to try and get an audience with the ruler of the kingdom as time was of the essence. The castle was located near the center of the capital and Jiraiya had to admit that the way the capital was laid out was very strategic. It wasn't very noticeable but the most important shops for sustaining life were located closer to the castle almost as though in case of an attack the outer ring could be abandoned if necessary. Add to that the increasing security that could simply be attributed to the protection of the castle when in fact they were probably there to ensure that key points were protected made Jiraiya admit that whoever designed the place had their heads on right. They were halted by the guards at the castle and they were asked to show their paper before proceeding. At first Jiraiya was afraid that they would be stopped since most daimyos wouldn't allow random people to enter their country. He couldn't be certain though of why they had been let through since they had been allowed in using fake identities that registered them as civilians. They were led by a pair of guards through the castle before they were brought before a large set of doors. The guards escorting them nodded their heads before the doors were opened and they were escorted in. They felt an odd sensation as they entered the room but shrugged it off, choosing instead to focus their attention on the beautiful woman sitting on a raised platform. Holy shit she's hotter than Tsunade's henge, Jiraiya thought as he let out a perverted giggle. Sasuke and Kiba were eyeing her like a piece of meat and Kiba was cursing the fact that the Uchiha would probably get first dibs on such a woman. Sasuke on the other hand was practically salivating at the thought of having such a woman. He could tell she was strong and would be the right woman to be the Uchiha matriarch in his mind. Jiraiya quickly got into his business mode and kneeled in front of the queen, the rest of the Konoha envoy doing the same. Sasuke was pulled down by Kakashi before he could utter a protest, the copy nin making sure that his student didn't jeopardize the chance of an alliance. Your Highness. Thank you for allowing us to be in your presence. May your reign be prosperous and long. I am. Jiraiya said but was cut off as the queen raised a hand to silence him. Jiraiya of the Sanin from Konoha. I am Queen Celestia of the Western Kingdom so what brings you Konoha Nin here to my kingdom? It is quite some ways off from the land of the elemental nations, Celestia said. It is a pleasure to meet you Queen Celestia. I am honored that you have heard of me. We are an envoy from Konoha located within the land of fire and we are here to hopefully create an alliance with your kingdom and the land of fire, Jiraiya said. Celestia's expression changed as she seemed to be contemplating the idea for a moment before it shifted back to an expression of indifference. No, she flatly replied. Would you explain your reasoning as to why you would reject our offer? The land of fire is quite a large and wealthy portion of the elemental nations and it would be largely beneficial for us to have an alliance, Jiraiya said. Do not take me for a fool. I know of the impending war in the elemental nations and I will not drag my people into it. There is nothing you can offer me that will even make me consider your offer. 
we have no need for your jutsu and we have more wealth and resources than your country could ever hope to achieve, Celestia said. How about bloodlines? I am certain they could help to strengthen your kingdom. Like the shadow manipulation of the Nara, the enhanced senses of the Inazuka and even the all-seeing eyes of the Hyuga? Jiraiya said trying to barter for an alliance. There is no need for such bloodlines in this kingdom. We are all content with what we currently have and as you have clearly seen, the people here are all happy with what they have now. If that is all then please take your leave, Celestia said coldly. She had no intention of dealing with the people who came from the village that had hurt her husband so deeply, it was already a miracle that she didn't just have them executed or thrown out as soon as she received word that they had entered the capital. Her husband was currently at the orphanage for his weekly visit and so she decided to leave him out of the matter, not wanting him to be affected by their presence, especially the arrogant Uchiha. How about the Sharingan? Sasuke said arrogantly as he stood up before Kakashi could reprimand him. What about the Sharingan? Celestia said, deciding to humor the boy since she could already anticipate what he would say. It would give her a good excuse to execute him after all. We could give you a child with the almighty bloodline of the Uchiha in exchange for an alliance. Sasuke suggested as he eyed Celestia like a piece of meat. Judging by your look it seems like you want me to be the one to bear that child, Celestia said dryly. Of course. You are the only woman worthy to bear an Uchiha child. Think about it my almighty eyes with your royal blood. It would give you a strong air for the future. I'm sure I can satisfy you than whoever you are currently with considering he isn't even around to greet us. Sasuke proposed with a smirk. With this he could get the woman in bed and make her his slave. Once he got tired of her, he could simply make it look like she had an accident and then use the power of the west to conquer the east, giving the Uchiha their rightful place as rulers of the world. Sasuke was so caught up in his dreaming that he did not notice the look of pure fury on the queen's face. Before he knew it, he was knocked back into the wall by the queen who had moved far too quickly for any of the leaf nin to catch. How dare you! Guards! Seize them! Celestia growled out. The Konoha envoys suddenly found themselves pinned by several swords which were held at their vital points while Sasuke was being restrained by two guards. I should kill you where you stand, my body. Mind and soul belong to only one man and he is the only man whose child I will carry. That man is the king of the western empire and my husband. If he was here to hear you say these things you would be have been turned to ash where you stood. Celestia growled out as the Konoha Nin felt a heavy pressure. No way, this aura, it's insane. It's even worse than what Serutobi sensei was capable of in his prime, Jiraiya thought. Don't bother trying to use anything that requires chakra here. As soon as you walked in your chakra had been sealed off and will continue to be sealed off while you stay within this room. Celestia said in response to Sasuke's confusion at being unable to activate his Sharingan. The doors flew open and in walked a regal looking man with blonde hair garbed in the purest looking armor. But what shocked the Konoha envoy the most was the whisker marks. Naruto. You're the king of the western kingdom? Jiraiya said in shock. You seem to be having a problem love with dealing with these people. While I do appreciate the gesture I think it is more appropriate if a king and queen were to greet the envoy no, why don't you fill me in on what has been said thus far? Naruto said as he walked up to the queen and gave her a kiss before pulling her back to sit on their thrones where she proceeded to fill her husband in on what had been said thus far. Differing thoughts were going through the heads of the various members of the Konoha envoy. Naruto is the king of the west. This works to our advantage. We can use his love for Konoha against him and maybe even get him to give up his position to Sasuke, Kakashi thought. No way the Dobi gets that hot piece of ass to tap whenever he wants to, Kiba growled out in his mind. Well I guess this works. I can use Naruto's crush on me to get him to dump the blonde whore and the leaf will gain control of the western kingdom. Sasuke can use that blonde whore for a while and once I'm done stringing Naruto along, we can dispose of the two of them and be together as it should be thought Sakura as her unstable mind kept making her picture her ideal fantasy with Sasuke. Naruto's expression changed from one of indifference to one of interest before it changed into an expression of pure rage and Jiraiya could roughly guess what he was reacting to. Before the Konoha envoy could even blink, Sasuke was sent crashing into the ground, leaving a large crater as well as splattering blood everywhere. Naruto made a simple gesture and the guards lifted Sasuke up once more, showing his bloody nose. How dare you speak to my wife, 
the queen of this land in such a way. I should have you executed. Naruto growled out angrily. I am an Uchiha, an elite. She should be honored to be asked to bear my children. I am much more worthy of her than you are. Sasuke retorted arrogantly. I would be careful if I were you Uchiha. You are on thin ice already and here you are nothing but an ant that I could squash at any time. Naruto said as the envoy felt the temperature in the room rise. This is insane. His power is double that of what the queen was letting out earlier. Jiraiya thought. I will repeat what my wife's reply once more. We do not wish to ally ourselves with the leaf. I will not have my people participate in a war that does not involve them. Naruto said as he took his seat once more. But Naruto, you can't leave the leaf to die. It's your home. What about becoming Hokage? Kakashi questioned. What about it? I was banished so that title is out of my reach. Besides, I have my own responsibilities now. And Kakashi, my father would be disappointed in you. I see no reason to speak to someone who is worse than trash. Naruto said. Naruto you know, but what about the Akatsuki? They will come for your biju eventually. The only ones left are you and the Eight Tails. Also they have an army of weird plant men. Jiraiya pleaded. Akatsuki are not a threat to me and their plans will never see the light of day as the Kyubi is out everyone's reach now. I have sent it away where it can no longer be used by anyone as a weapon ever again. Should Akatsuki come and threaten my kingdom then I will dispose of them with my own means. Naruto responded. What did you do to the Kyubi? It is property of Konoha. You had no right to do anything to it. In fact, you should be begging us to let you come back and be our weapon. Kakashi growled out but neither the king nor the queen were paying him any mind. There is a tournament coming up in a few days. If you can win it then we can discuss this idea of an alliance once more. If not well you can be guaranteed a fast trip back to Konoha. Naruto said and with a wave of his hand, the guards escorted the leaf envoy out. Mark my words Dobi, I will win this tournament and then take all you have. I'll make sure to break your wife. She will make a good little pet to revive the Uchiha clan. Enjoy what you have while you still can. Sasuke shouted out as the doors slammed closed and the leaf envoy were brought to their accommodations. Naruto sighed and slumped deeper into the chair. He closed his eyes for a moment then felt his body get pulled into the warm embrace of his wife, taking comfort as he lay his head against her bosom. Why can't they leave me alone? I don't want to abandon them Celestia. There are still people I care about like Tsunade, Jiraiya and a few others. But the rest, they wish to take what I have. I will not ever put you or our people at risk. Naruto said. I know it was hard for you dear. But I will always be with you, whether you are a king a killer or a pauper. We are together till death do us part, did we not swear that to each other? Celestia said comforting her husband. What would I ever do without you my love? Naruto said with a chuckle tilting his head up to give a chaste kiss to his wife. Probably ignoring important clauses and creating half-baked laws that would backfire at you. But why don't you let your wife take care of all of your tension? Celestia said as a magic circle appeared below them and they disappeared in a golden glow, Naruto content to let his wife soothe his worries. Are you really sure about this dear? This is the first time you have participated in the tournament since the kingdom's formation and it has been a good two years since anyone has seen you really fight. Celestia said worried as she sat at her dresser and was combing her hair. Naruto simply chuckled at his wife's worry and walked over to her, taking the brush from her hands and resuming the grooming of her lustrous blonde locks. It is the only way to do this. Konoha needs to understand that I am not to be trifled with in what better way than to send their precious, almighty. Uchiha back to them broken. Naruto said with a scoff at the end as he continued to brush his wife's hair. I'm worried. What if something bad happens? What if they are a threat to the people? I do not want to drag our people into a war again. Seeing all the children so happy and everyone able to live their lives not having to fear that they might not see tomorrow, I do not want them to lose that. Celestia said as she grabbed her husband's hand and pressed it against her cheek. That will not happen. I will make sure of that. Now I think you should hurry and get dressed. It's almost time for the tournament after all. I'm sure that the people will be pleasantly surprised to have the four grand generals participating in the tournament. It is after all rare to see one of them let alone all four together. 
Naruto said with a chuckle as he helped his wife stand and get dressed in her usual armor, his hand ghosting across certain parts of her body longer than they should causing her to pout at his teasing. Stop that you tease or we won't be able to go to the tournament on time. Don't you think it's a little unfair to the Konoha envoy? I get that you want to show them that we are not to be trifled with but all four of the grand generals of the kingdom. Celestia said as she finished getting ready walking hand in hand with Naruto to the stadium where the tournament would be held. The only way to reason with the idiots on the council in Konoha is through excessiveness. Naruto said as they waited at the walkway to the royal box for the announcer to welcome them. While Naruto wasn't really a big fan of ceremonies or whatnot but Celestia drilled into his head that it was part and parcel of being a leader. Naruto, when you fight the Uchiha I want you to end the battle quickly. I don't want you to give him any chances. End swiftly my dear husband. I will not take any risks that they won't try anything. The kingdom cannot afford to be without its king and I refuse to even entertain the idea of any harm coming to you, is that understood? This fight is important in helping you overcome your past but I don't want anything bad to happen to you. Is that clear? Celestia said seriously as she placed her hands on Naruto's face and pulled his head close to hers, pressing their foreheads together. I understand and I will do my best to adhere to your wishes love. But I will promise you this at the very least, I will return safe in your arms once my match has ended. Naruto said giving his wife a kiss just as the announcer finished their welcome speech. And now presenting the royal couple of the Western Kingdom, the Flaming King, Naruto Uzumaki and his wife, the Lightning Queen, Celestia Uzumaki. The announcer shouted. The crowd went into a frenzy as the royal couple walked out to the royal box, giving waves to the people before sharing a very public kiss, much to the crowd's delight before they took their seats. Once again, Welcome one and all to the biannual tournament of champions where selected warriors from all across the kingdom are invited to participate by the king for a prize money that values at over 1 million gold coins. Today we have a special treat as there are participants from Konoha all the way from the elemental nations. From the village hidden in the leaves we have, Rock Lee, Kiba Inzuka, Neji Hayuga and Sasuke Uchiha. The announcer said and the four leaf nin walked out. Lee was his usual joyful self while the other three had arrogant expressions on their faces only to be greeted by disapproval from the crowd who knew how their king had been treated for doing his job. The one who received the worst reception was of course Sasuke Uchiha. Naruto was touched by the actions of his people but raised his hands to stop the jeering so that the announcer could continue. There is a special treat today as we have all four of the grand generals here today. That's right folks the four strongest people in the whole kingdom next to the king and queen, the leader of our kingdom's forces who answer only to the royal couple, give a round of applause for the grand generals. The announcer said as four people walked into the arena, three males and one female the males were all wearing black shihakushos with a white haori over that with one of them having a kimono with flowery designs on it. The woman was dressed in a similar hori but underneath that was a black garment that was backless and didn't cover her shoulders. First off we have the Grand General that holds the title of Lucifer with his cool looks and even cooler powers, give it up for Toshiro Hitsugaya. The announcer said as he pointed to a handsome young man with silver hair that had a katana strapped to his back. The man smiled at the crowd before leveling a glare at the Uchiha. Up next we have the man with a plan, the one in charge of research and development for the whole kingdom, give it up for the Beelzebub, Kazuki Urahara. The announcer gestured to a man with dusty blonde hair with a striped bucket hat on his head who smiled before whipping out a fan and striking a humorous pose. We have the Leviathan, one of the few people who can make our queen fight at her true speed in the fastest fists of the West, Yoruichi Shihoin. The announcer said, gesturing to the woman who had mocha skin and purple hair who gave a coy smirk to the crowd, making them go wild. Last but not least we have the Asmodeus, the man who can charm any woman except our beloved queen and can drink enough to kill a horse, Shunsui Kiraku. The announcer said as he gestured to the final man who had black hair in a ponytail and a straw hat over that. He had a two-sword pair with one short and long sword which was different from the other two males. What do you think of our chances Jiraiya? Kakashi asked. It's not looking too good I would say. Those four, they're strong. Insanely so. They are at the very least cage level and to make matters worse, we have no idea what they can do. Frankly I think we can kiss our chances at an alliance goodbye. 
Heck I would think that after that fiasco Sakura caused in her attempt to seduce Naruto yesterday that we would have been booted out already. Jiraiya said grimly. You can't be serious. Lee, Neji and Tenten are all strong Junin and Sasuke is low cage class going to high cage when he uses his cursed seal. There is no way those guys are cage class. The woman and the silver haired man possibly but those other two look like jokes. Kakashi responded. If only you knew how wrong you were Kakashi. Those two you labeled as jokes. They're probably the strongest two here next to Naruto and his wife. The way they move speaks volumes of their power and their act of foolishness is due to the simple fact is that few could pose a threat to them that they don't need to take things seriously. Jiraiya thought, realizing that they had been roped in OA losing bet with Naruto. I thank you all for coming to the biannual tournament and festival. The first pair of fighters are ready and it is with great pleasure that I announce the festival to officially commence. Naruto said as he held out his goblet and had a toast with his wife before the first match began. All right folks, for our first matchup we have Neji Hayuga from the Hayuga clan of the Leaf against our Asmodeus, Shunsui Kiraku. Let the battle begin, the announcer shouted before moving out of the way of the two fighters. Everyone else returned to the competitor's boxes as only Neji and Shunsui were left in the arena. HMPH, so you're supposed to be one of the strongest here. Pathetic, I will show you the might of the Hyuga clan. You should just give up there is nothing you could do to possibly trump my all-seeing eyes. Neji sneered at the man who simply tipped his hat in a greeting. It's a pleasure to meet you. I wasn't really keen to participate in this tournament but it was an order from his majesty himself so I really couldn't refuse. Hiroku said as he let out a sigh. Then you should just surrender and accept your fate. Neji said as he got into a fighting stance. Unfortunately I can't surrender or I'd lose face as a grand general as well as bring shame to his majesty. I would much rather be enjoying a drink or two so forgive me if this match ends a little quickly. Hiroku said with a smile before he blurred out of sight. It was only by sheer reflex that Neji was able to dodge a hit that was meant to deliver a crippling blow, jumping away in shock. That speed, I could barely see him move. And if he isn't considered the fastest then how fast exactly is the fastest, Jiraiya thought to himself. I couldn't follow his movements with the Sharingan, how? That shouldn't be possible, that power should be mine. Sasuke seethed. Oh my! that was meant to incapacitate you. Oh well I guess I'll have to step it up from here on out then. Hiroku said, turning to Naruto who gave a nod. Well, it seems that his majesty wants me to at least show off a little for the crowd so I guess you are lucky to be one of the few people who will get to see my swords and live, after all, I've been forbidden from killing you after all. Hiroku said as he pulled out his other sword, crossing them over and muttering some words before pulling them apart the swords transforming into a set of Chinese scimitars. This guy is no joke now. As soon as those swords changed his power skyrocketed. He is easily S ranked maybe even double S ranked. This begs the question on how strong the others are. Even then I don't think that this is the full extent of his power. This kingdom really has some monsters, Jiraiya thought grimly. Bushugoma. Hiroku said lazily as he swung his blades in a wide arc releasing a strong burst of energy that spun towards Neji. Kaden. Neji countered, going into the stance for the Hyuga defense and finding himself having to put in quite a good bit of effort in trying to counter his opponent's attack. Irony. White. Hiroku said as he appeared in front of Neji in a much faster burst of speed the one he started the match with and sliced Neji with his blades, Neji putting up a sloppy defense which was the best he could manage. Neji collapsed to one knee as he felt the pain from the wounds set in. Why, the cuts were all extremely light so why is it that they hurt so badly? This shouldn't be possible, unless it has something to do with what he called out earlier. Neji thought to himself. Sorry then mister, I want to get back to relaxing so I'll have to end this match now. Takaoni. Hiroku said as he appeared above Neji and with a simple tap with the pommel of his blade, Neji was down for the count and the winner is Shunsui Kiraku. The announcer said as the people all cheered at his victory. How, some sort of genjutsu, what exactly is going on here? And why can't I copy any of his moves? I won't accept this. Sasuke seethed as a few of the Konoha envoy helped to bring Neji to their area of the stadium for some medical attention. No way, if my guess is right, then we definitely don't want to mess with that guy. 
He can somehow make children games real. That's why Neji was hurt so badly despite receiving light hits and that's why he got knocked out with a simple tap. The question is though, what exactly is the extent of the man's powers? Jiraiya thought to himself while beside him Kakashi was seething at how his Sharingan couldn't follow or copy anything. Now for the next match we have Kazuki Urahara, head of research and development as well as the Grand General who holds the title of Beelzebub. He will be up against, Kiba Inazuka from the famous Inazuka clan of trackers in the leaf. The announcer said as both competitors stepped into the field. The announcer raised his hand in the air and signaled the match to begin, jumping away to his safe spot. I guess I have to match up to Kiraku's performance now. Can't let myself look bad now can I? Kazuki mused as he drew his sword and muttered some words that caused the blade to be surrounded by a red glow before its form changed into a sleek medium-sized sword. Another sword that changes its form with some sort of incantation, is it some sort of chakra weapon? But it feels different, Jiraiya thought to himself. Big whoop your sword changed shape that still won't help you against me. Kiba sneered although he was trying his best to hide his fear. He was thinking that his opponent was some clown but seeing him have a similar ability to Neji's opponent made him fearful. Kiba was suddenly caught off guard as his cheek sported a light cut. That was a warning shot. Now let's see how good you are shall we? It's said that the Inazuka have the keenest senses. Let's see if that will help you against me. Kazuki said as he lightly swung his sword, causing a wave of crimson energy to emanate from the blade towards Kiba who was forced to dodge to the side in order not to be hit by the attack. Kiba was shocked to see that the ground sported a deep trench from where the attack had traveled. Don't look down on me. Kiba roared out as he charged towards Kazuki. His nails extended and sharpened into claws as he went into his regular taijutsu style, trying to land a hit at the smirking Kazuki who was simply weaving around his strikes as though he was always two steps ahead. Kiba was mindful of the hand that was still holding the blade, making sure to be able to react to it should Kazuki choose to counter with it at a moment's notice. You're pretty good but for someone from his majesty's age group you are far weaker than he is. And you expect the obvious. While good in your own unique style of combat, you aren't adapting to changes in the situation, for example if I change my strategy, Kazuki said calmly as though explaining the weather. Kiba was surprised when Kazuki seemed to go for a counter with his sword only to toss it in the air. Kazuki blocked Kiba's strike with his left arm before delivering a wicked palm thrust at Kiba that sent him flying into the arena wall. Don't compare me to that lowly demon. I'll kill you with this move. Suga. Kiba shouted as he emerged from the wall and went into his attack, spinning at high speeds like a drill towards Kazuki who simply smirked and raised his blade across his body, creating a red hexagonal shield in front of him. Kiba's attack hit the shield directly and pushed Kazuki back slightly but did no damage at all to the blonde man who managed to force Kiba to stop his attack, the Inazuka staggering a little as he felt his chakra starting to run out. You seem to be a little dazed. Let's see if this will get your focus back on this battle, Kazuki said with an evil smile as he flicked his wrist, sending multiple small red projectiles of energy from the hexagonal energy structure in front of him, forcing Kiba to roll out of the way, barely able to avoid the brunt of this attack. Don't look down on me, Kiba growled out. Despite his exhaustion and injuries, he attempted to use another Suga on the man, this time putting in all his remaining stamina into it. However much to the shock of the Konoha envoy and Kiba himself, Kazuki simply drew circles in the air in the opposite direction to Kiba's Suga. Instead of the attack tearing through the man like it should have, Kiba found that all the power he had put into the attack had been dissipated and he found himself on the ground, the tip of Kazuki's blade dangerously close to his throat. I surrender, Kiba said knowing that he had barely anything left to fight with and his opponent still looked as fresh and chipper as before the battle began. The announcer called the match and Kiba was helped out of the arena by Asuma before Sakura gave him some medical attention and a pill to help him deal with the chakra exhaustion as the crowd cheered at another victory for the kingdom. Still doubting that my earlier observations Kakashi, I'm tempted to just up and leave right now just so that we save face. The past two matches have gone to show just the kind of caliber of people Naruto has working for him. None of our participants could even make their opponent have to work for the victory. Jiraiya said with a grimace as he watched the next match between Lee and the only female Grand General about to begin. We still have a shot here. With Lee and Sasuke, 
Li is just as strong as an S-class shinobi if he releases the sixth gate and Sasuke still has his cursed shield and Sharingan. Between the two of them I'm sure we can at least get one victory to make Naruto give us the aid we need. Kakashi said. I look forward to pitting my youth against your youthfulness. Let us have an exciting match. I am interested to see what the best hand-to-hand -hand combatant in this kingdom is capable of. Li said as he got into his stance, opting to take off his weights immediately since judging from the previous match the woman wouldn't be any slouch in the speed department considering she was supposed to be faster than her other companions. As soon as the bell rang indicating the start of the match, both fighters blurred out of sight as loud sounds of contact followed by destroyed turf in the arena were the only signs of the clash between the two fighters. They appeared once more at opposite ends of the fighting area, Li showing slight signs of fatigue and some bruising. You really are worthy of your title. To think that you could keep up with me. That's a feat few have achieved. Yoruichi said with a sly smirk. You are most youthful in your attacks. If it wasn't for Gai Sensei's training I would never be able to keep up with you. Li said with a smile. Well then, I guess we should step this up a little shall. Give the crowd something to really cheer about. Yoruichi said as a light blue aura started to surround her. Very well. I guess I should meet your power with my own by releasing three of the gates. Lee said as his skin turned red and his chakra became visible. The two disappeared once more and this time sonic booms were heard as the signs of the two clashing became much more obvious. Then both appeared as their bodies seemed stock still while their limbs were not even visible as they exchanged a flurry of strikes. It seemed that they were evenly matched until Yoruichi smirked and dodged one of Lee's attacks, getting inside his guard and driving a wicked kick into his knee, causing Lee to stumble before he was sent flying into a wall by a wicked palm thrust. Lee pulled himself out of the hole his impact had left in the wall and shook his head to try and shake off the feeling of being disorientated. It has really been a fun fight thus far but I have to end this now because the next match needs to start. Honestly if circumstances were different we might have been able to spar more often and maybe even learn a thing or two from each other but, this is the end. Yoruichi said before her entire body glowed white and white lightning seemed to radiate from her form. She disappeared from her spot and before Lee knew what hit him, his vision went black as Yoruichi delivered a devastating flurry of strikes that incapacitated him. Let's put our hands together folks for that exciting match and amazing showing from both Rock Lee of the Leaf and our Leviathan, Yoruichi Shihoin. The announcer said as Rock Lee was carried out of the arena by Jiraiya and Yoruichi waved to the crowd before blurring to where the rest of the Grand Generals were. And now for the final match of this tournament, we have our Lucifer. The announcer was just about to announce the next matchup between Sasuke and the last remaining Grand General when Naruto stood up from his seat causing everyone to go silent. He jumped from the royal box, landing softly in the arena. There will be a change in the program. I would like to be the one to take on the Uchiha from the leaf. Naruto said without a hint of emotion. Oh my, in a surprise turn of events, it seems our king himself has decided to participate. That's right folks, we are all in for a great treat as our king who hasn't been seen in a public battle since the formation of the Grand Generals, is now going to battle with Sasuke Uchiha from the leaf. The announcer said to the roaring approval of the crowds. What's the matter Dobi? Afraid I would beat your four strongest people in the kingdom. It doesn't matter. I'll make sure to humiliate you in front of everyone then I'll enjoy showing your wife a true king. I'm sure she'll get around to me eventually. Sasuke said with an arrogant smirk before he felt a huge wave of killing intent coming from the crowd calling for his head for how he spoke about their king and queen. Oh no. I do not doubt that any of my grand generals could have taken you out. Your curse seal and Sharingan wouldn't have made any difference against them. No the reason why I am in this arena today is to pay you back for the way you talk to my wife who happens to be the queen of this kingdom. I will make sure that you feel the consequence of every single action that you have taken in this kingdom. Naruto said, his gold eyes greatly disturbing Jiraiya. My boy, just what have you gone through to be have eyes like that? What would your mother and father think about everything we have done to you and what you've been through? Jiraiya thought to himself. The announcer signaled the match to begin and quickly leapt away from his spot. Before anyone could even blink, Sasuke Uchiha was sent into the ground by a hit that left an impression of him in the ground. Get up Uchiha, that was only one hit. I promise you that there is more of that coming for you. Naruto said coldly, 
Sasuke got up of the ground, and if looks could kill Naruto would be nothing but ash as the Uchiha tried to glare menacingly at the blonde with his Sharingan. Try this then Dobi, Kaden, Gukaku no Jutsu, Sasuke shouted as he jumped into the air, rapidly running through hand seals before spitting out a large ball of fire. The ball of fire hit the spot where Naruto was and engulfed it in flames. Holy shit did he just kill Naruto. This could cause an international conflict. Jiraiya thought worriedly. Don't think you've won just yet Sasuke. You see, fire has no effect on me at all. Naruto said as he calmly stood in the middle of the flames with no sign of injury at all. That shouldn't even be possible. He was hit straight on and even someone like Jiraiya would be slightly injured in his sage mode. Kakashi thought in alarm. Like I would believe that. There is no such thing as fire having completely no effect on you at all. I just need to use stronger flames that's all. Kaden. Karyu Enden. Sasuke shouted as he went through hand signs and inhaled a larger amount of air before exhaling an even hotter and greater amount of fire than before. This time though, rather than take the attack straight on, Naruto simply stretched out his arm towards the oncoming fire dragon. The Konoha envoy were shocked beyond words as the fire seemed to coalesce in his hand, turning into a small sphere before Naruto simply crushed it. Foolish Uchiha, fire is my domain, I wield absolute control over any form of fire in existence. There is no way your pitiful attempts at trying to burn me with your flames will yield any results. Naruto said, Sasuke gritted his teeth and proceeded to draw his katana from its sheath on his back. Fine then. If fire doesn't work then I'll just use something else instead. Sasuke said charging with his sword poised to cut off Naruto's head while his Sharingan blazed in fury at Naruto. Naruto simply remained calm and was utterly bored at how slow Sasuke was to him, using his thumb to push his sword slightly out of his sheath. Just as Sasuke was about to strike him, Naruto drew his blade in one swift movement, parrying the strike and directing so that Sasuke was left off balance before kicking him into a wall. That shouldn't be possible, my Sharingan couldn't read his moves. How is the Dobi so strong? Is this because of him leaving Konoha? That power should be mine. I deserve it as an Uchiha, as an elite of this world. Sasuke thought with gritted teeth as he channeled lightning chakra into his blade. Soon the sound of chirping birds could be heard throughout the stadium as pale blue lightning sparked at Sasuke's katana. That sure brings back memories doesn't it? After all that was the same attack that you used to nearly kill me. But such a thing won't work on me anymore. I am no longer that same blonde idiot you fought with all those years ago. No I've got my own responsibilities now, so there is no way I can lose to someone like you. Naruto said as Sasuke charged forward at his highest possible speed, his form a blur although it still seemed to be slow to Naruto, Celestia and the Grand Generals. The katana filled with Raiden Chakra was poised to stab the king in his heart and end his life but Naruto merely sidestepped the attack, gripping Sasuke's wrist and causing him to drop the sword, the blade falling to the ground as the supply of Raiden Chakra was cut off. Then much to everyone's shock, Naruto threw Sasuke into the ground with a great amount of force, lifting the man off his feet as though he weighed nothing. Call the match, I see no reason to continue this humiliation. I expect you to be packed up and gone by tomorrow latest, people from Konoha. Naruto said as he started walking towards the royal box to rejoin his wife just as the announcer called his victory. You don't get to choose when this ends Naruto. This ends when you are dead on the ground and your power and everything you hold dear is mine. Sasuke shouted in a crazed voice as he was in his cursed seal form, black lightning concentrated on his hand. He dashed forward at much higher speeds in an attempt to kill Naruto. I have tolerated you for long enough. Naruto said as Sasuke suddenly found himself encased in a pyramid of energy made up of odd looking runes. I will have nothing to do with the leaf and its people can burn for all I care. Naruto said as he raised his hand at the Konoha envoy, trapping them in a similar energy pyramid as Sasuke. But you Uchiha, have annoyed me for the last time. Killing you would be merciful so I will take away that which you pride yourself most on. Naruto said as Sasuke suddenly shut his eyes and screamed in pain. Stop hurting Sasuke, he is the last loyal Uchiha and should be treated as such. Sakura shouted. Naruto stop this, this isn't you, these people and this place has turned you into a monster. You should come back to us. 
Come back to me, Hanada pleaded, trying to convince the blonde that his place was with her not with the blonde harlot that claimed to love him. After all she knew everything there was to know about him. Who could be a better match for the blonde than her? You delude yourself. All of Konoha is deluded. You can continue kissing the Uchiha's ass for all I care. I have taken away his Sharingan and he will not be able to pass it on either. And I am a happily married man Hinata. Despite what you think, I would never forsake Celestia. Naruto said coldly. You can't do that. The Sharingan is property of Konoha. You have no right to take it away, demon. You will pay for this. Kakashi shouted before he went through the same thing and found that his Sharingan had become a normal eye. Please Naruto, without the Sharingan Konoha will be severely crippled in the coming war. Jiraiya pleaded, they were already weakened as is. They couldn't afford any more losses. As I said before, I don't care what happens to Konoha. Besides, you guys are done for anyway all I'm doing is speeding up the process. Although I will reconsider this if Konoha is willing to give me what is rightfully mine from the start then maybe I will consider returning the Sharingan for what little good it will do. Naruto said before the two pyramids of energy glowed brighter and the Konoha envoy disappeared. Seeing as the matter was dealt with, Naruto turned to address his subjects. Please everyone, enjoy yourself on this merry day. Do not let that little sour event dampen the celebrations. Naruto said before he disappeared. Celestia noticed how he seemed to be in turmoil and so went after him. Eventually she found him lying under the tree in their private gardens looking into the skies deep in thought. Celestia smiled at him lovingly before taking a seat and pulling his head into her lap, gently using one hand to play with his hair while the other hand gently caressed his cheek. Care to share what's on your mind? This recent dealing with Konoha has left you more troubled than any other. I don't think I've seen you this emotionally exhausted since, ever. Celestia said as she continued her tender caress, Naruto visibly relaxing at her touch. I feel somewhat bad you know, for those people who were once precious to me at least in Konoha. As much as I know most of that village deserves what's coming, a part of me still wants to try to believe that they deserve a chance, that they can be redeemed. I wonder what my parents and Sandame Gigi would think. Naruto said voicing out his thoughts completely to his wife. Naruto, I don't deny that there are some who truly don't deserve the same fate as the rest of the village but honestly, most have been given far too many chances. They were saved by your parents before and then saved by old man third. Both times they had a chance to craft a stronger and better Konoha but each time they merely went down a darker road, becoming a more and more perverse image of the Konoha that your parents and the third believed in. They are not the same anymore. You did the right thing by giving those you believed could change an opportunity to save themselves. Celestia said. Naruto smiled and laced his hand with the one that was stroking his cheek. What would I ever do without my queen by my side? Naruto mused. Probably doing a bang up job of running this kingdom. Celestia said with a giggle while Naruto pouted at the joke. Anyway, now that you aren't all grumpy and uptight anymore, why don't we go take a shower together? And while we are at it, you can help me scratch a certain itch I have that you caused while beating down the Uchiha. Celestia said with a seductive grin before getting up and walking into the castle with a sway in her hips that caused Naruto to absentmindedly follow her to their chambers. The Konoha envoy were surprised to find that when the green light had died down they were back in Konoha and the energy pyramids that confined them were gone. They were currently in the middle of Konoha and the people all around were looking at them strangely wondering where exactly they had come in from. Jiraiya decided to ignore the stairs as there were much more pressing matters to deal with right now. He first checked the status of the rest of his team and saw that aside from the injuries sustained by the tournaments, participants, everyone else was in good shape. He was surprised though when he found a scroll in his hand that appeared out of thin air bearing the crest of the king of the western kingdom. All right guy, help to bring the four tournament participants to the hospital for a thorough check up and rest for them to recover. The rest of you will help him. Kakashi, Asuma, the two of you will be following me to give the report to the council as well as verify our statements. Jiraiya said as he and the two Junin disappeared in a shunshun to the Hokage's office. So what do you have to report Jiraiya? Was the mission a success? Tsunade asked as she leafed through the insane amounts of paperwork that she had on her table. The mission was a complete failure. We need to report everything that happened to the council now. Jiraiya said with a grimace. 
Tsunade's nodded before signaling the hidden Anbu to call for a council meeting. What do you have to report Jiraiya? Is that an alliance contract? Danzo said as he noticed the scroll that Jiraiya was holding. The mission to try and make allies out of the Western Kingdom was a complete failure. We were not only unable to gain an alliance with the Western Kingdom but there is a risk of war breaking out between us as well as three of the envoy being heavily injured and the loss of the Sharingan for Konoha. Jiraiya explained as everyone finally noticed that Kakashi now had two normal eyes instead of one Sharingan eye. The council was immediately in uproar until Tsunade banged the table with her super strength to get their attention. Silence. Jiraiya, explain what exactly happened on the mission. Tsunade ordered. We entered the Western Kingdom as per mission instructions and were surprised to see a powerful kingdom that was not only well defended but it was also very prosperous. The people were all happy and well cared for. As we reached the capital, we managed to pick up some important information about the kingdom such as how it only recently reached its current state and how the currently ruling monarchy were well loved. We headed over to the main castle to ask if we could have an audience with the ruler of the kingdom and were immediately granted permission to see them. At first we only met the queen and tried negotiating with her for an alliance. However, Sasuke arrogantly tried to preposition her as though she would submit herself to him just because he was an Uchiha, causing negotiations to become tense. Then everything changed when the true ruler of the kingdom, the king himself entered the room. It was to the great surprise of the entire envoy when we found out that the king of the western kingdom was none other than Naruto Uzumaki. Jiraiya said, stopping his story to allow the information to sink in. The council was in uproar at this information as many called for the demon to be killed while others claimed that they owned the western kingdom by proxy since the Jinchuriki was the property of Konoha. Mebuki Haruno even said that her daughter's seduction should have worked given the demon had a crush on her daughter. They were quickly silenced once more by Tsunade who motioned for Jiraiya to continue. Naruto talked to his wife, the queen whose name was Celestia and after finding out what Sasuke did, he immediately gave the Uchiha a good hit and held us all at sword point. Though for some odd reason he didn't kill or imprison any of us and instead offered us a chance, saying that if we managed to win a match in the upcoming tournament to celebrate the formation of the kingdom, he would consider an alliance. However, we were sorely mistaken on our chances as it was a one-sided victory in favor of the Western Kingdom. Naruto brought out his best warriors, four people said to be the strongest in the kingdom next to Naruto and his wife. He also decided that he would personally battle Sasuke, tossing the Uchiha around like he was a wet behind the ears genin trying to take on a cage. Jiraiya said. How is this possible Jiraiya? Sasuke is one of the strongest we have in the leaf village. For him to be beaten so easily, I don't recall the Jinchuriki ever having this much power, even with the help of the Kyubi. Danzo said as he catalogued all the information learned today for future use. He isn't the same orange-loving kid that left the village ten years ago. He's stronger now, much stronger. I didn't even detect a trace of the Kyubi's power on him and yet his power was at least four times what Serutobi sensei could produce in his prime. I think it is best if I show you what exactly we are up against. Inoichi if you would, Jiraiya said. Inoichi nodded and proceeded to link everyone's minds together so they could see what Jiraiya had seen in the Western Kingdom. This power shouldn't belong to the demon. It should belong to Uchiha-sama. We should go and demand that everything be handed over to Uchiha-sama as is his right. The demon brat should be honored that his wife be chosen to become the Uchiha matriarch. One of the civilian council members claimed. Well then you are more than willing to try and convince Naruto. I've seen what they are capable of there and I for one have no reason to risk my life anymore. Also we are all forgetting one important detail. Jiraiya said as he held out the scroll and the images stopped being shown to everyone in the room. And what would that be Jiraiya? I presume that it pertains to the scroll you are holding. Danzo said. Naruto has used some odd sealing technique in order to take away the Sharingan from Konoha. Both Sasuke and Kakashi have lost the ability to use theirs and he has also said that the Sharingan can no longer be passed down so long as he doesn't release the seal. I have tried looking but there has been no evidence of a seal placed on either of them so there is no way I can reverse the technique. Inside here are his demands before he will release the technique. Jiraiya said as he unfurled the scroll and passed it to Tsunade. He demands that we return all of the belongings that are rightfully his. 
This includes everything that rightfully belonged to the Uzumaki and was shared with the Senju due to the marriage between Mito Uzumaki and the first Hokage as well as anything that belonged to his mother, Kashina Uzumaki. In addition, he wants everything that belongs to his father. Tsunade read out as he looked to Jiraiya for confirmation. While the belongings of the Uzumaki clan are something we cannot easily let go of, I am certain that whatever belonged to the demon's no-name father can be easily handed over. Who exactly is his father Tsunade? The head of the civilian council asked. There was no way the Yandaimi could have asked any other parent to give up their child if he wasn't willing to give up his own. Naruto is the son of the Yandaimi Hokage. He is the heir of Minato Namikaze's legacy. Jiraiya answered as the council was in uproar once more. I don't understand how none of you fools could see it. He looked so similar to Minato. I mean blonde hair and blue eyes. Shikaku said. We need to bring him back to the village and apologize for all our wrongs. We must bring the Namikaze heir back. He can win the war for us. Surely he loves the leaf as much as his father did. The civilian counselors said. Fat chance. With all that we put Naruto through I don't think he would spare a thought about us. In fact, if he could he would most likely destroy us himself. But I think he doesn't want to destroy the village that his parents gave their lives to save. I would think that Minato and Kashina would probably be rolling in their graves knowing what you put their son through. Shikaku said. This scroll says that if we wish to adhere to the demands and have the capabilities of the Sharingan return to us then we are to prepare all that is to be surrendered and meet him at Tanzakugai in 10 days where the handover will take place and the capabilities of the Sharingan will be returned to us. Tsunade said, reading the terms of the contract before going on to discuss their next action with the council. You will not be getting your way if I have anything to say about it Naruto Uzumaki. I will make sure that you become a strong warrior for the leaf and everything you have is put to strengthening the leaf. The riches of your kingdom will be used to rebuild this village and your army will make us the most feared of the shinobi villages. I will make sure your wife gives as many children that possess her powers and once the two of you have outlived your use, well accidents can happen after all, the roots will do whatever it takes to hold up the great tree. Danzo thought to himself as he started plotting on how to gain control of the situation. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.